Lord. I looked at Brother John. I said, I love you too. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> you know, the greatest thing in my life that I could give anybody is Jesus. And the message that I'm about to speak on, <clears throat> I, I started crying one guy, y'all have to wait in my voice. But I love God, but more than anything else, he loves me. And he loves you. And the Lord had spoke to about three or four weeks. I was sitting in the back, back there. And the Lord spoke to me, the crutch. I said, okay. You know, I'd seen this man years, about 30 years ago, come in like he was about drunk and dressed up and had all kinds of stuff on. And I said, and the Lord dealt with me, and that's not what I'm saying. And I'm going to talk to you tonight or preach to you tonight or teach to you. Or me and John both say we'll teach or preach, and we do both. But she's going to put my scripture up. But I bought me a crutch tonight. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Come on, Tyler. I'll just pick on you, don't. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I want to read my scripture. I know where I'm going. Y'all just hang on. It's Proverbs, third chapter, fifth verse, and it's going to sixth verse. But I want you to listen to this. A crutch is something. Let me read this. I want you to listen to this definition and think about this. A crutch is a device of service that enables people to walk or otherwise be helpless. It helps you get where you are or where you're headed, something or someone you feel you need to have it to survive. Some crutches may be evil, but some crutches are valuable. And the Lord gave me this scripture. And the very thing that he told me about was leaning on our own understanding. But listen to this. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Trust, rely, cling to him. How many know that sometimes you've trusted people and they let you down? Everybody's hand in the house ought to go up. But I know a friend and I know a man that you can trust a God that won't let you down. There's a lot of things in life that we put our trust in, but we got to put our trust in God. Thank you, Lord. I got me another crutch here. Come on. Praise the Lord. And I might forget about these fellas. They might get tired on me, but they'll be all right. Praise the Lord. This crutch is my faith in Jesus. This crutch is what a lot of us is leaning on your own understanding. And the Lord began to deal with me that. You've got to trust him with all your heart. And then it says, lean not, the next verse. You forgot. Lean not. Go back. If you can. All right, I got it. Lean not to your own understanding. Well, if I lean on something, I'm going to push you down. I, he supports me, right? When I lean on something, how many ever leaned on somebody that you lean really too much? Or you leaned on something and it broke? See, a lot of us got broken crutches in our life. I'm going to get there in a minute. Y'all just hold on. Leaning on something for support. Hello? And a lot of us, we try to lean on our own understanding. And what it is, our own understanding is marred. Our own understanding sometimes is moved by emotions. It's moved by past hurts. It's moved by church hurts. It's moved by relationship. Y'all might as well come on in the house because God gave me this and he's speaking to some people in this house. We make decisions sometimes on the way of our understanding something. We perceive it wrong because it's marred. It's because of the way we've been taught. It might be an environment that we've been through. Or sometimes, darling, we want to answer so bad that we just move in any direction we want to. Hello? And sometimes when people hurt us, listen to this, I got a word from somebody in this house, and I can put my hand on you. Sometimes when we've been hurt by somebody or church or whatever, we want God to punish them. We want to answer right then. 
But I got news for you. God is wanting some people in here to close some doors. So he can open some new doors. I'm talking about oh, close some doors of hurt. Instead of saying, God, you do this. Then I know you move. Sometimes God won't cause vengeance or do anything about that situation until you close that door and step out of that bondage and step into that path that God's chose you to be. And then you'll begin to grow and then God begin to renew you. Then God will take care of the situation. But see, our understanding is, God, I want you to do this first. God, don't work that way. Anybody with me? Our understanding sometimes makes us make wrong decisions. But Jesus wants us to lean on him because he has divine wisdom, divine understanding. Our understanding has got to connect with him. My understanding is going to fail me sometimes. Sometimes we look at people and we feel like, oh, they said this about me or they don't like me. We perce- our perception was wrong. We understood wrong. Hello? God is wanting to do something good, he said, but he was talking about if we lean on our understanding, our own understanding, we're going to mess up sometimes. Because we move on our emotion. You ever moved on your own emotions? Have you ever moved on when somebody hurts you? And there's one thing about it. If somebody talks about something where you've been hurt up, a defense, a wall pops up. Is that true? And that's human nature sometimes. But that's because we're not healed from that situation. And God wants us to be healed and loose from that situation. Anybody ever done? Don't raise your hand. Had a defense, a wall come up because somebody mentioned something because you'd been there and you hadn't been healed yet of it? Don't lead on our own understanding, he said. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Your heart can't be divided. If you love somebody, your heart can't be divided. Come on in the house. And the Lord said, I'm a jealous God. He ain't going to have to, you know, you either serve him or you don't. Lean not on my understanding. Lean not on your understanding. And the next verse is, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Acknowledge him. Know him. Know him in prayer. Know him in humility. Know him when he speaks to you. Sometimes you know that when we can get a deaf ear to God, if God don't uh, rubber stamp something of approval that we won't done in our life, this ain't a shouting message yet, but you'll get there. Because I don't know about you, but I want to step into some new things, Brother Michael. I want to get doors open. If doors need to be closed in my life, I want them closed so God can open a new avenue, a new path, a new door. Everybody hear what I'm saying? There's some things in our body, in this body right here that you need to let go of some things and close some doors. We can't tell God because our understanding is, you know, God, you know, one time somebody come against me, and I'm not even going to give the names, and said this and this and this about me, about my knees. And I let it go. I let it go. And then come to find out God took care of it. I didn't have to take care of it. But God moved in such a way that his own son and family began to be involved in what he accused my niece of. God will take care of things. we got to trust God again. Do I really believe God loves me no matter what? Do I really believe, Brother Steve, that when he said no weapon that's formed against me, no weapon that's formed against me can prosper? Do I believe there's nothing that can tear me down or knock me down? No weapon that's formed against me or you. And he said even every time that talks about you, he'll bring it to judge. God has got this. No weapon. That's formed against me can prosper. But I got to believe it. I got to believe it. The only way things defeat me is when I get my mind in where I don't need to be. When I get my understanding where it don't need to be. God wants the very best. And I got something else for somebody here. There's people in here uh, thinking about job changing. God said, don't look at it what it seems so pretty, but look at it and put your understanding with his understanding that he'll lead you where you need to be. And that's for two people in here. He told them, my son, done my higher. I know God is in this house whether you know he's here or not. I feel him. How many feel Jesus? 
This ain't a shout message, Kevin, but I'll tell you what, I want to learn to lean on Jesus. I don't want to say I'm leaning on him. I want to lean on him because you know what? He can carry everything. He carried everything to the cross. My God, he didn't lay it down. He could have laid it down, but he picked up that cross for me and you that we could have life and have it more abundantly. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I'm free. I'm glad God will set you free, and I'm glad God will lift you up when you're down. I know God will do what he says. God blesses me. Sometimes I, I, feel, I know I do. I have favor with the Lord for some reason. But I love him. Do you think when Adam and Eve went in the garden, did they use God's understanding of their own? God had already told them not what to do. Right? But they did it anyway. Because their understanding is they listened to the devil and they thought, well, it'd be okay. But it opened their eyes to sin, knowledge of good and evil. And it really got them to the place, I guess it gets us to the place when we get knowledge of good and evil. Well, I got this now. I can control everything. I can do my own thing. You know, we was thinking about reading in the book of Amos about the children of Israel, God's people. They always thought because they were chosen people, they could do what they wanted to do. It don't work that way. I mean, now you've been chosen from the very foundation of the world. But still there's a place and a way we got to walk. Amen. And a place that we have to be in God. I like it. I can teach y'all. I'll go quiet on me now. But when Adam and Eve in the garden, they disobeyed. They went by their understanding. And by doing that, they were cast out the presence of God. Amen. Do y'all know that? I got a list of stuff here. And y'all are quiet. And I know there's people that's got crutches in your life. And people like to put, preach on the crutch of alcohol, drugs, pornography, and all that. But when you misunderstand God, that leads you to drugs and alcohol and all that other stuff. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do y'all hear what I am saying? Misunderstanding, not understanding what God wants to do in your life and hearing the voice of God. The enemy is coming to speak to you. He's coming to steal, kill, and destroy. But God said, I'm going to speak to you, and I'm going to give you life, and I'm going to give it to you more abundantly. But see, you've got to receive that. See, when the enemy speaks, you've got to know. Jesus said, my sheep, they know my voice, and a stranger they won't follow. We know the word of God. We feel the presence of God. But when the enemy speaks to us, sometimes we've got to make a decision. Hello? Choose this day whom you're going to serve. Going to choose life or death. Oh, y'all quiet tonight. I have got to trust him. I have got to lean on him. I have got to go forth in him. And I was reading a lot of other stuff, and I'm trying to get rid of all this stuff in front of me because I got something I want to tell you is that there's a lot of things Places and people in the scripture did not leave on Jesus. What do you think about blind Bartimaeus? His understanding was he was blind. He was a beggar. That's the way he looked at it. Because that's all he couldn't see. So he heard things. That was his mentality. That was his understanding. And a lot of us listen to what somebody says or the enemy says. Feels like we're no good. We're going to always be who we used to be. Come on in this house. You know, I, some of us got lower self-esteem because we listen to other people. But we need to hear from God. Am I leaning on the faith of Jesus or am I leaning on my own understanding? Who am I leaning on? Leaning on my understanding, I'm going to fall. Because my understanding can't carry the load. It can't. It can't carry the load. You can only, you know, sometimes your brain or your mind gets overloaded. You ever got overloaded, Marty? Sometimes you have to get off by yourself. Your mind gets overloaded. You ever got overloaded? Can't even think straight? Sometimes we just need to pause and say, Lord, all right, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to walk in your understanding. I want to walk in your wisdom. I thought Brother John was going to preach a little bit this morning. Because Solomon asked for wisdom, understanding, be able to discern. That's what we need to pray. I don't want to lean on my understanding. I want to hear from God. I want to hear what thus saith the Lord. Do y'all want to hear from God? You sure you want to hear from God? How about the woman with the alabaster box? She had been told she was no good. 
She was poor. She was a woman of bad report. And in her understanding, that's who she was. And she didn't have much. She was poor, but she had a little alabaster box. So her understanding, her crutch was, I'm no good. My understanding, her crutch understanding was, I'm no good. But something happened one day. There was something going on down at Simon's house. And she got bold enough to go into that house. She wasn't welcome. She wasn't welcome. Somebody say, she wasn't welcome. But she walked in that house. And when she knelt down and broke Etopo Sundalamahaya, broke the alabaster box and began to anoint Jesus, she began to change crutches and her crutch became Jesus. Y'all might as well come on in this house. Thank you, Lord. The things of her broken crutches, she didn't have to depend on no more, but she depended on Jesus because he set her free. God wants to set us free, folks. He don't want us to keep dealing with the same old, same old, same old and going around the mountain back and forth. Ever been around the mountain? Ever miss God? Had to go back around the mountain? Ever God ever tested you and you didn't sort of pass the test so you had to go back around the mountain? Not because he's displeased with you, because he wants you to learn to trust him. Because he's trying to make us to be warriors. Thank you, Jesus. The woman is your blood. Her understanding was, go to a doctor. It's been all she had. Hello? There's nothing wrong with doctors. She was bleeding from her body. But she come to the place where enough was enough, I guess. Hello? No doubt the enemies talked to her because she was an outcast. Because when blood came from your body, you became an outcast. She was an outcast. But God, one day she decided, I'm going to go where the crowd is. I'm going to go where Jesus is at. She's getting ready to change her crutch. Right? She's getting ready to change her crutch there, Tyler. And when she moves to that crowd, I, I, every time I think about her, I can just see her pushing her way through that crowd, Marty. Just pushing her away. Just pu- she didn't care. She wasn't even supposed to be touching nobody. She was unclean. But when you want Jesus, you'll do anything to get to Jesus if you had to tear the roof off the house. Y'all hear what I'm saying? If you really, really want to touch Jesus, now if you're just playing around a little bit, you know what? We, I want to say this too. We was talking about this in class this morning. Why did Jesus ask that man, do you want to be made whole? His mentality and understanding was, I've laid there 38 years. Our people's brought me food. They've done this for me. I've got used to this. I'm familiar to this. I'm comfortable in this. Hello? 38 years. Do you really want to be made whole? Change sometimes scares people. Amen, right, Bobby? It changes people. But I don't know about you, but whatever it takes... For me to become what God has ordained us from the very beginning, I want to be that. Am I willing to say, Lord, not my will, not my own understanding, not what I want, not my desires. Am I willing to say, not my will, but thy will be done. Even Jesus in the garden. Brother John mentioned it this morning. Even Jesus in the garden, he said, let this cup pass from me. But if it's thy will, I'll drink the cup. We got to get to the place our desires and wills is put down that we can put on the will of God and we take on the will of God God will supply every your need because he said seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all these other things they're going to be added to your life I'm telling you about a God that's there when nobody else is glory to God I could go on and on how about naming the leopard oh he was an important guy he was a captain of the host of the Syrians but he was a leopard a man of valor helped armies win, but he was a leopard. He was an outcast. But they had this maid stand with him and said, go talk to the king. Go to the prophet and you'll be healed. Well, his understanding was, well, he'll come out and he'll put his hands on me and he'll pray for me and I'll be delivered. Well, guess what? It didn't happen that way. He sent the prophet. The prophet sent a servant out. Woo! His understanding wasn't for it to go that way, Brother Michael. He wanted somebody to pray for him, put their hand on him, recognize him. He was important. But God had to do a work in Naaman. He said, I want you to go down to the river of Jordan, which was the muddiest river. 
and I want you to dip seven times in that water. And when he got through, he got mad, he got upset, and he got to talk, and he went to the maid, and she looked at him, and she said, if it asked you to do something great, would you have done it? If he asked you to do something great, would you have done it? So you know what he did? He went down that old muddy Jordan, and he dipped seven times, and he came back up clean, and he listened. His old crutch changed. His old attitude changed. His understanding changed that God is God, and there is no other. I'm telling you about a crutch that's been beaten and put 39 stripes on it. I'm talking about a crutch that went to Golgotha's hill. My God, I'm talking about a crutch that laid down his life for you. Honey, it won't bow. It won't bow to the devil, but he'll rise up and he'll fight your devil, he'll fight your enemy but he wants the God of Jehovah to rise up inside of you and stand up and fight your enemy we got a word and we got a tool but God wants us to stand up and fight the enemy and say no more I think about Abraham, listen now Abraham had the right crutch can you imagine waiting for the son of promise? And you're 101, one of them was like 99 or something like that. And God tells you to go sacrifice your son up on Mount Moriah. Now your natural understanding would be, God, you're crazy. I've asked for this son and you've gave me this son and he's mine. I think I'm misunderstanding. But he didn't. But most of us would have said that. Now hearing me? But he held on to a crutch, Christ Jesus. I'm on the wrong crutch. Let me get back over here. He held on the crutch, Jesus. And he walked up Mount Moriah. God has a purpose for everything that goes on in your life. Hello? Everything. Sometimes we make bad choices, but sometimes every day of our life we make choices. But see, God will help us even with the bad choices that we make. Amen. But when he got up there, he was going on the faith of Jesus Christ because he knew God's voice. But the thing about they had prayed for that son, what gets me too, they laughed when they finally told her she's going to have a child. You ever ask God for something and then when it happened, it just blew your mind, you laughed about it or you said something, well, God, you just surprised me. Anybody? Oh, girl, I got a miracle this past month. It surprised me. I knew it was coming, but it surprised me. I'm going to tell you about it later. Abraham gets up there and getting ready to draw that sword back to kill him. But first of all, when they're going up the mountain, his son says, where's the sacrifice? What did Abraham say? The Lord will provide. Everybody say, the Lord will provide. So he walked up that Mount Moriah to kill his son. He drew back that sword and the angel of the Lord stopped him because he had a ram already prepared in the thicket to be the sacrifice. Are y'all hearing me? Sometimes God just wants you to trust him. Sometimes God wants you to understand that what he's doing is to make you grow. He didn't want Isaac. He wanted Abraham. He wanted to see how much Abraham loved him. There's things that we go through in life that God sometimes tests us. We don't understand. It's beyond your understanding. Just stand and trust God. Just stand and trust God. Don't lean on your understanding. Acknowledge, know God, hear his voice. But he leaned on the crutch. When David went before Goliath, who was he leaning on? Say it again loud, loud, Marty. The Lord. Because see, Saul wanted him to wear his armor. But he said, I can't do this. I hadn't, God ain't proved these things. I can't wear these. And he told the giant, he said, you might come against me with swords and staves. But I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. Y'all not hearing me. I'm coming to you and you go in the name of the Lord. And you go in the name of Jesus and you mean it. You're not just saying it. You speak it in the authority that Jesus is real and Jesus will do that. Honey, the enemy has to back up. What are we doing with our crutches? Jesus, my crutch, is very valuable.
I don't know about you, but all through the scriptures, I can go over and over and over stories in the Bible where God used people and they used Jesus as a crutch. How about Noah when he built the ark? Who did he lean on? If he'd lean on his understa- own understanding, he'd say, because the people thought he was nuts. They thought, he's trying to build an ark and there ain't no rain coming out of the heavens and he's telling me there's a flood coming? Come on. But he didn't lean on his understanding. He had to lean on what he heard. God said, build an ark and I'll save you and your household. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? So I believe I'd rather have the crutch Christ Jesus and hear him speaking to my life. How about when Daniel was put in the lion's den? Who is, he, who is he looking to? Who is his crutch? Daniel wasn't afraid. He wasn't even supposed to pray. He just threw up in those windows and started praying anyway. And he knew that if he prayed, he'd be thrown in lines, Dan. It was told to him. But he stood up for what he believed. I can see Daniel now being thrown in that lines, Dan. He wasn't worried. He wasn't crying. He wasn't begging. He wasn't fighting. He just walked right in with those lines like pretty little kittens. See, that's how great God is. You not me, might not be Daniel on a natural line thing, but you may feel like sometimes the, animal, uh, the line's just roaring against your life. I heard somebody say something the other day, and it really stuck in my mind. It said the enemy, you know, it says the, lion's, the lion is like, a, uh, is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He didn't say he will devour. He said seeking whom he may devour. The devouring is up to you. It's what you do in your storm. Y'all not hearing me? The enemy's out there to destroy you. And when your storms blow and your battle and he attacks you, it's what you do with that attack. You can tuck tail and run or you can take a stand and say, Devil, you're going to have to back up because I'm coming on through. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Lord. Where is the children of God? It's time we stand up and be counted. Because he said we're marching sealed houses, places that's been shut up. Oh, I don't want to get too much in there. I'm talking about a people that's going to stand for God and trust Him as their crutch. Three Hebrew children. They were bound, tied, thrown into the fire. Who was their crutch? Who, what would they understand? It was God. And we hear all these stories and we hear what God can do. But see, it comes down to the nitty gritty. Do I believe He'll do it for me? Do I believe he loves me? Do I believe he'll make a way where there don't seem it the way for me? Do I believe that he will meet my needs according to his riches and glory? Come on, church. we got to start believing and trusting God. I remember as a teenager going to a Pentecostal church, and we began to pray before service. And when we went in service, miracles happened in that service because people believed and touched God. The enemy wants you to doubt. Well, Judy, you don't know what I'm going through. Well, you may not know what I'm going through, but I'm going through it with Jesus. I said, I'm going through it with Jesus. He's the only one that won't let me down. Only one. Thank you, Lord. All these people, I could just go on and on and on. Different ones. They put their trust in God. Where are you putting your trust? Where's your crutch? Where's your crutch? I'm talking about a crutch in Jesus, believing that he works all things out. That he works for us all together, everything that we need. If I trust him. If I give it to him. See, I can quote scriptures, Bobby. And I can tell everybody I'm a Christian and God will do this, but i got to believe it in my spirit. It's got to be like fire shut up in my bones. Praise the Lord. It's got to be real. It's got to be. And God's looking for some real people that matter. It don't matter where you come from. It don't know what what you did in the past. It don't matter about your care hurts. He said, I still love you. And I'll still make a way. And I will still heal you. And I will still touch you. And I'll bring you out of the bondage. I will set you free. I'm telling you what. We've all disappointed God since we started this journey. But he didn't give up on us. He just put us back on the potter's wheel. Or let us go through something to prove us. But I'm telling you. God is on your side. He's a way maker. What are you talking about, Jesus? Did he not wake away for the children of Israel through the Red Sea? 
I mean, they had a lot of enemies behind them, Egyptians. But God destroyed them all. Oh, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. If one of us catch fire, we can put, what is it, a thousand to flight? Don't think when you come to church, the devil don't come too. Now, I ain't calling nobody no devil. I'm talking about a God that stood before a tomb. And honey, once we were a dead tomb, we were a tomb of death. He stood before Lazarus. He said, Lazarus, come forth. What happened? He did what? But was he free? What had to happen? A change had to happen. What had to happen though? Change his crutches. I like that too. I changed his crutches. The death clothes had to come off. I don't know about you, but I'm no longer dead. I'm alive in Christ Jesus. And I'm talking about a crutch. I'm talking about a God. I'm talking about somebody that's so special that no matter what goes on in my life, he already knows it. Because, see, he created us from the very foundation of the world. He has chosen us. He told you, Jeremiah, before you was even the form of the womb, I knew you. I ordained you. Y'all hear me, church? Some of you have been ordained from the very beginning, so you might as well come on in the house and begin to thank your God. You may say, you don't know where I've walked, but I'm telling you, walk, you've never walked where Jesus has walked. And Jesus took the load for every one of us, and he he took it to the cross and he took it to Calvary and he said father forgive them for they know not what they do my God he said they don't know what they do but he said forgive them <laughs> glory to God I'm talking about a God that deliver us when we worship and praise him I heard Sonia say this morning when I begin to worship him when you shut out everything else What was the woman at the well said the true worship? They said, go worship in the mountain. He said, no. The true worship has got to worship me in spirit and in spirit and in truth. It's not always me jumping. It's not always me running. It's my heart touching the very heart of God. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm talking about a God that no matter where you go or what you've done, he says, I forgive. I'm talking about a God that would do anything for you if you just love him and trust him. Hello? He said, oh, yeah, if you're going to be my disciple, take up your cross and follow me. Everybody's cross is different. And while God deals with Jim about something, he may deal with me something differently. And sometimes we feel like when God deals with us, well, why didn't you do that for them like you did for them? Because God didn't want to do it that way. God knows what it's going to take to get your attention. Remember, the enemy is the one that speaks to you and tells you to lean to your own understanding. Don't forget those that hurt you. Don't forget those church hurts. Don't forget where you've been. Don't forget when you was in drugs. Don't forget when you was, That's what the enemy speaks in your ear. Because you're no good. You're going to always be the same. I got news for the devil. When you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb and been redeemed by God, the devil can't have you and the enemy's got to let go because God will set you free and break your chains if I let him. But see, it's like this. And I saw this in the Sunday school class not too long ago. I, people, God wants to close some doors in people's lives. But I could see somebody on the other side pulling on the door. God's pulling one way to try to close it, but they're still wanting to open it. Still keep it open. Because God hadn't done exactly what they want him to do. Oh, I'm talking to somebody in this house. Because God ain't done the thing that he thinks they should do to that person. He's been pulling on that door. But you got to let go. I mean, now we need to let go of some things. And we hear this a lot. And some of you are in your mind, you're thinking in your mind, I want to ask you, what's your crutch? What you leaning on? What broken crutch are you leaning on that's not working in your life? I'm trying to tell you about the crutch. Trust Jesus. If you'll trust and believe him, you will see a difference in your life. I'm not talking about just thinking about it, reading about it. I'm talking about believing it. Faith is something you can't see. Amen? You just got to trust him. You just got to trust him. Can I trust him to be my life? Can I trust him to supply my needs? Can I trust him to deliver me? Can I trust him to heal me? Come on. 
And I'm not just talking about feeling, uh, physical healings. There's people who need to be healed in a lot of different areas. But see, God can't do it unless you give it to him. Oh, Judy Rich. Have you ever been to the altar and you prayed? And you took the thing right back to the, you see? God wants you to let go. I don't know about you, but I want to move forward. Because, see, I see God getting ready to do something great, even greater. But, see, he's got to get his body ready. I was talking about that message I preached. Bobby and I, uh, Pam said, don't preach that again, about sifting to be shifted. Some of us have been through, going through a sifting time to be able to be shifted to a different level. But God is trying to do a work in our life that whatever it takes, Antonio, we've got to get to the place, Lord, I want to be what you want me to be regardless. How many know that? We've got to get sold out again. I mean, really sold out. That we love Jesus regardless of what, whether he's answering my prayer or not, I still love him. Whether I'm healed or not, I still love him. Whether he makes a way today or tomorrow, I still love him because he's going to make a way because his promise is true. But i got to trust him. i got to stand on the right cross of Jesus and say, I'm not going to move. Are we willing to do that? Jennifer waited, what, 14 years for a baby. She stood in her faith. Sometimes it seemed to waver, but she stood in her faith. I believe God will even give you the very desires of your heart. And some of you wish that he didn't because you'll say, Oh, Lord, I got a house payment now. I got a car payment now because that's what you ask God for. It's the truth anyhow. God is so special. He's sacred. He's holy. Sometimes we even take God for granted. Sometimes you can take the presence of God for granted. I know nobody in here does that. I don't know like you. I'm like Brother John. I want everything God's got to offer. If you call that greedy, then that's greedy. I want everything he's got. He told me he'd give me a peace that surpasses all understanding. He told me he'd supply every one of my needs according to his riches and glory. He told me I'm healed by his stripes. Do y'all hear me? He told me he'd make a way where there don't even seem to be a way. He told me when the enemy comes in like a flood, Judy, I'll raise up a standard against it. Honey, we need to trust God and stand on that. Don't let the devil back you in a corner, but stand up and back the devil up. Woo, I feel Jesus in this place. Y'all might be tired, but I feel like shouting a little bit. Glory to God. What am I made of, Brother Steve? I don't want to be a wimp. That's the right word. I want to be tough in the spirit of God. I want to stand when nobody believes, you know, I was telling people in my work, I was telling my class about work, about things God's been doing in my life. One girl looked at me and she said, oh, you're lucky. I said, oh, mm-mm, honey, I'm blessed. And I'm trying to leave a testimony there. My boss lady director, she gets so excited when I tell her some things God's done in my life. She says, I feel goosebumps. I don't even know what faith she is. See, you never know the change you can put in somebody's life, but you've got to speak about Jesus. But you've got to use wisdom. Can't shove it down the throat. I know none of y'all ever tried to do that, right? You never walked up to somebody and said, don't you know you're going to die and go to hell and you need to go to church? That person's already turned you off. They already know that. Love is the greatest tool. Love is the greatest tool. What crutch are you leaning on? What crutch are you trying to support you, hold you up? Trust in God. Trust Him with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. Acknowledge Him and He'll direct your path. We quote that scripture so many times He has a plan for our life and He does. He's got a plan but we've got to walk what they're in when He shows us the path. You understand what I'm saying? Jesus is the light. I've just got to follow him. If he follows me up the mountain, that's where I've got to go. If he follows me through the valley, that's where I've got to go. Amen? If I have to fight Goliath, a giant, I'm going to be like David and say, I come to you in the name of the Lord. <laughs> or I come to you in the name of Jesus. Because you can't do nothing in yourself. You can bluff a little bit. The devil ain't scared of your bluff. 
He's not. You can quote scriptures to him, but he ain't scared of that either. It's when you come in the demonstration of the power of God. Y'all hear what I'm saying? When we come in the demonstration of the power of God and the love of God, the devil has to back up. We can talk all day what we got, but we got to manifest, manifest what we got, Brother Tyler. You guys ain't tired, are you? I forget people sometimes that helps me up here. I don't want to lean on the crutch that one. You can just throw it away. I mean, not really throw it away, but you know. But I want to lean on the faith of Jesus. Can I trust him when I can't even see him working? I said, can I trust him when I can't see him working? We look so much with the natural eyes and perceive our perception with the natural eyes that we miss what God's doing sometimes. God can do a miracle for us and we miss it. Because we look for a miracle in a certain way. How about when Elijah, I could preach all night, but I'm getting about to stop. I think about Elijah when he went to the cave, run from the devil. And the Lord said, Elijah, what you doing down there? He thought he was the only one left. Honey, I got news for you. He's always had a remnant of people that's going to praise him and love him. But he didn't come in the storm. He didn't come in the thunder. He didn't come in the lightning. He didn't come in the loud noise. He didn't come in the shouting and the hollering. But he came in a still, small voice. Sometimes God wants you to listen, and he'll speak to you in a still, small voice. But you got to be listening. We're so busy telling God what we want. That we don't hear what we don't hear what God is saying. God speaks to me a lot at home, like in the house, doing things and sing to me before I come to church, and I'm not going to know what he's telling me. But the thing is, God will speak to you. But a lot of us we want to see something physically to know that God is moving. But that's not really faith, is it? But sometimes we have to say, God, help my unbelief. Because sometimes your battles can seem like they can overwhelm you. But we forget, you know, when the disciples, listen, I, I, gotta, I gotta close, I know, but listen. When the disciples was out in the ship and the storm was going on, and they said, Well, don't even care. So have you said that to God because some things you're going through? God, don't you even care? Don't you even feel what I'm going through? Don't you even care what I'm feeling and going through and what people are doing to me? They forgot who their crutch was. They forgot that Jesus was on board. Y'all not hearing me. Sometimes we forget Jesus is on board because we hadn't talked to him lately. We hadn't worshipped to him lately. We haven't studied the word lately. Y'all come on in this house. I'm not trying to condemn nobody. I want us to move up a little bit higher so that God can work through our life and gifts and our callings can start being perfected in Jesus. How many really want to work for God? Don't raise your hand if you don't. You see nobody raise their hand? Y'all scared what I'm going to say, aren't you? Thank you, Lord. There is a cost. There is a cost. Don't think when, the de- when God blesses you, the devil ain't going to be out that door trying to put you down. But there's a cost. You will go through the fire, but the fire won't burn you. I said you will go through the fire, but the fire won't burn you. If you trust in Jesus. You will go go through trials and tribulations, but he'll make a way. Because he don't leave me alone, even though you ever fell alone in a battle. You felt like he's all alone, nobody cared. You know, we're getting that pity party thing. Y'all never done that, right? And Jesus says, I'm there all the time. I haven't even the breath that you breathe. I could wish he'd just breathe like he did on the day of Pentecost. Oh, my Lord. Let me ask you again, what's your crutch? Don't lean on your understanding. Don't lean on what people tell you that you ought to be or that you're not good enough. Because if people tell you enough, you'll believe it. You can talk yourself into something or talk yourself out of something. 
Come on. I have to talk myself into going to a doctor. <laughs> Brother Jim said amen in Sunday school. I'll be honest. And I believe doctors are good. But I have to talk myself into it. I may pick up the phone, try to dial, put the phone back down. <laughs> but God knows my heart. And God is not going to put on you no more than you can bear. And with that temptation or whatever you're going through, he said he'd make a way of escape. So I don't know what all of you are bad. I don't know what your crutch is, but some of you are leaning on broken crutches. That ain't no good. And see, when your understanding gets marred or mixed up, then people do turn to drugs and alcohol because that was the environment they grew up in or that's the way mom and dad handled it. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? We lean back on the past, but we got to move forward. We got to leave the past behind us. Press toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Y'all hearing me? Leave things behind you. Leave, everybody say, leave things behind you. Let go. Forgive. Come on, some of us need to forgive. You're hindering your prayers if you don't forgive. And it's not hurting them, it's hurting you. Judy Rich, I didn't sign up for this tonight. I'm just giving you what Jesus gives me. Yeah, I like to I preach the shouting message, but God is, I want to be, Brother Michael, y'all just don't know. I desire to be all that God wants me to be. And sometimes I've had to walk some places I didn't want to walk. But you know what? He held my hand right through that. Thank you, Jesus. And sometimes you feel like it's insurmountable. You go through one thing, then another thing happens. You go through one thing, then another thing happens. You go through one thing, another thing happens. It seems like it piles all up. But then you got to all throw it on Jesus. Because he said, cast your cares upon me. Not on somebody else. Somebody else can't fix it. God can fix it. Praise the Lord. Bobby, you got a song you want to do? Bobby's coming with a song. I'm trying to close, y'all. But the people that I talked to tonight about the jobs, don't look at what it looks maybe good, pretty, pretty, whatever. Make sure it's where God wants you. That person that's holding on to something in the past that needs to close that door, let go of the door. Then you'll see God do the rest that needs to be done. We don't tell God when to do something. Hello? We ask. And I know some of you probably say, Lord, rain, rain fire down on so-and-so when I do something to you. Then you feel a little bit guilty because your flesh rears up. Y'all flesh ever rear up? Yeah. And you walk out the flesh, you begin to die. But it said if you, if you mortify the deeds of the body and you walk out the spirit, you're going to do what? You're going to live. So let's, we need to be spiritual, right? We need to worship God, right? We need to crutch Christ Jesus, right? We need something that's a sure foundation. That's Jesus. My Lord, he's beat. He was bruised. He's, everything was done to him, but he didn't break. He didn't crack. He didn't give up. He didn't give up on you. He didn't give up on you, and he didn't give up on you. Let's don't give up on him. Let's be soldiers of the cross. Everybody stand, and I want you to think about a minute what your crutch is. Which crutch you leaning on? A natural something, or are you leaning on the crutch across Jesus? This altar's already open, and you know what? There's people that I have spoke to that needs to be on this altar. Because God is wanting you to move forward. But there's some things you got to do before you can move forward. There's things you, God, you want God to do in your family and your children. But you got to let go and let God be God. Can't control Him. You got to set Him free. How many know that? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Sing, Bobby, or whoever's singing. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. All I could see was. Jesus.